okay, it says I'm live. It says I'm live, and I checked with that, and we're going to start this all over again. Sorry, I'm having... Uh, last time I went live, I didn't have as many problems as I got right now. But um, we'll get this figured out. We'll get it figured out, and eventually it will work out perfect. Um, we're going to go with that as good as possible. Um, so I'm going to start answering some questions that I did have. Um, but let's finish up that. Thank you for this third time a charm, okay? And uh, we'll keep in mind that this is probably going to be the first one that I'm, I'm going to scale all the other ones. So this is the live that I had scheduled. And um, some of it I'm going to answer some questions that I already had that had come in over the past couple of weeks. Um, I've got the comments allowed. And so if you want to comment, I'd love to see your comment and, and I'll answer your questions. Um, hopefully everything's going well. Katie, if you can send me a message and tell me that you see this, that would be great. Anyone else in the chat, uh, send me a message and say that you see this. Um, that's great. Uh, sorry for all the problems. Okay, so let's get into it. I was saying before that wherever you live, you should start eating at like an Asian market or a Mexican market, um, an Indian market, these types of places. Find them. Uh, one of the top things to start eating there that you find is store life. Like we get used to living in a certain places and shopping at the same places, okay? But part of our genetics is, is we all kind of came from some nomadic and we all ate seasonal. And the, one of the problems I think that's happening with people's guts and their whole thing is that because we live in la-la land and we can kind of get something shipped to us fresh from wherever, you don't ever have to eat seasonally. And I think that has a huge problem with all of our, our body systems because the Chinese and the Indians and, and the Ayurvedics and all of these systems, they characterize foods as well as therapies and all these other things with stuff as simple as it's hot and it's cold. And if you're too hot, you got too much what they call like a hot, uh, hot liver or wet spleen or all this other stuff or wet lungs, um, slow digestion, uh, which then turns into phlegm into your lungs. Um, they say eat foods that heat that up, eat foods that sweat that out, eat foods that cool that down. Um, and then also, uh, one of the things that we know about longevity with people is that over in these blue zones, the vast majority of the blue zones, the things that they eat the most of, 80% of their calories come from starches. And, but it's the weird starches. It's not just all rice and potatoes. It's cassava, it's taro, it's yucca, it's all of these uh, breadfruit, all of these other things, these starches, which is when you go into the Asian market, you look at these big brown things or big, you're like, what the heck is that? And that's what I suggest going into the Asian market or the Indian market or the Mexican market is go exploring and don't be shy about going up to a person who looks like they're an Asian person or Mexican person and go, what is that? What do you do with it? Is it good? That's the three things to, to find out. And they'll tell you, oh yeah, yeah. Some things are for a little bit more expert palates and then some things are a little bit more, uh, again, with all of, uh, or simpler and anybody can do it. Anybody can can eat a potato. Anybody can eat a sweet potato. Anybody can eat a bland sweet potato. That's what taro is and yucca. Um, and don't make them too sweet. Learn how to get used to them a little bit more blandly. The purple potatoes, purple, yeah, purple sweet potatoes uh, have some of the highest antioxidants. And in Asia, actually what they do is they put them in salt water and they zap them with electricity. And that ups the, the uh, antioxidant level exponentially, like huge. It's like some serious... And I think I'm back, okay? So I'm back on, uh, back to normal. Rotate your phone back to normal. All right, well. It said that, that this is the orientation. When I tried to rotate it this way, orientation is locked, rotate device back. That's what it says. So if you're seeing me sideways, tell me, Katie. Um, What's going on? Uh, I don't really want to move forward until I know that I'm coming through well. Um, I'm very sorry about this. And I had problems with this too on the last live stream and, and it took me three, four times and you only saw the one that I got right. 
So, um, one of the questions that I had is about knee valgus. Um, how do you cure, how do you fix knee valgus? And what is knee valgus? Knee valgus is knock knees, is the knees kind of going in. Um, most people, the way that they, they treat it in terms of some of the exercises, it's the, the, it's the difference between adductors and abductors. And so they'll have you um, put the stretchy bands in between your knees. Um, so taking the stretchy bands in between your knee, wrapping around your knees and rotating out like this against the stretchy band. Because if your knees are in like this, it's because the muscles that make you do that are too strong, but the muscles that make you do that are too weak. So what you want to do is you want to strengthen the muscles that go out like this. So putting a rubber band on your knees and stretching them out this way. They also talk about doing, like for instance, putting it around the knees and then doing squat and step out. Squat step outs help to, with the rubber band around the knees. And what that does is it helps to um, strengthen those adductors as opposed to the abductors. Or, I'm sorry, abductors as opposed to adductors. Just keep in mind when you say ab and adductors, add is you're adding to it. So abduction is adding to a leg going in, adding to your body, and abduction is away, going away from your body. But I like to treat it other ways too, which is, all right, um, she said, I'm good. All right, yay, I'm good. So um, one of the other things that I do for these things is I've got this old book. So I do this with people with knock knees and flat feet and things like that. You can go online, you can see all these different exercises. Me, this is like an old book from the 1960s, I think it is. And it's for children. So it's this lady that went through and, you know, she teaches little kids so it's, it's, how do you fix knock knees? Well, it's better to fix them when you're a little kid as opposed to when you're 32, 42, you know, these years. So these are one of the ones in particular. This one is the one that I use for, if you got flat feet, it's what they call building a mountain. And you put like a mat on the floor and then you use your toes to grab and scrunch it in together and build it up into like a pile, keeping your heels together. And then you flatten it out and do it over and over and over again. Um, another one is, is walking the line. Um, and so, see, she has these all listed for flat feet. Um, this is another one for flat feet, which is picking up marbles. Taking, having a kid sit on the floor and picking up marbles and, and going from one side of the body to the other side. Or, or I have people pick it up from either sit on a chair or sit on the floor. If you're older, it's probably easier to sit on a chair. And then pick up the marbles and cross your body and drop them into a solo cup or drop them into a cup. And then dump them out and then do it on the other side. But she goes through and has all of these. And I print these up for people. So these are things that to, to help to fix some of these structural, postural things. And she does have them broken up into if you've got knock knees, if you've got bow legs, if you've got this type of stuff. So I use some of those things, uh, and it's similar to the, the, the rubber bands, but this one is more functional type of stuff because, it, first of all, if you got knock knees or you got the valgus, is it's coming from two places. One, uh, I do these exercises because it's coming from your feet. So if you got knock knees, you're probably also going to have flat feet. And the, the arch muscle is on the bottom of the foot, and when the, it's tight, it actually lifts up and shortens the foot up a little bit because it makes it be like a spring spring, right? Which then that helps because see if this is your foot, that's your ankle, then this is your knee, and then this is your hip joint. So if we're having problems at the knee, is the knee tweaking out of place? So if it's your knock knee like this, then what's happening is, is you're doing that angle like this. It's supposed to be like this and it's a side angle. And then it weakens the muscles that are on the inside of the knee. But if it starts from because you got flat feet, then these exercises of abductors, which are at the hip area, adductors and abduction, they're looking, they're trying to strengthen the stuff in the hip, okay? But what if it's the foot because the foot is collapsing and then the knee collapses? So really, you want to bring the foot back to bring the knee back in line. So I would, rather than just doing the rubber band ones, I would also work on the feet, rebuilding the arch. And keep in mind, any muscle... It's just like a muscle, which is you can exercise and you can rebuild it and you can make it strong. If it's weak, you can make it strong. And if it's too strong, 
it's not because it's ever too strong. It's because its counterpart, its pair, is too weak, right? So it's always a level of, if we want to sedate something because something's too strong, it's because the other side that's supposed to oppose it of the teeter-totter is too weak. And so usually you have to strengthen the other side to make up for the overstrength. And then you have to stretch the other side and don't exercise that side or don't strengthen. So sometimes it has to do with learning how to do exercises on one side of the body and not on the other side of the body to get the balance. But one of the other things I want to say is, is that where is it really probably coming from is... So, like right here, okay? So, I'm look at this chart. So, you see it's coming from the low back because if the spinal cord goes down here, then what controls the muscles that go into the hips and all this other stuff, it's coming from here. So, if it's coming from up here, then it's a back injury that's then making those adductors not work. So, even if you try and do exercises, but the short is here, it's not going to help because it's... Grandma, who had a, a stroke and the side of her face is dropping, it's like, try harder, Grandma. She can't. And so if the valgus happens because there is a neurologic scar tissue, and so what I do is I do these mud packs. I do body work. I can also um, do stretching and, and do, um, uh, uh, there's a number of different things that I would do for myofascial release, neuromuscular therapy, trigger point type of stuff. Also, cranial sacral to try and get the sacral pump to start to work. But if it's an energetic hole, meaning if you understand your body, your physical body is actually being run by this electromagnetic energy. And these electromagnetic energies are essentially plasma balls of energy. And if you look at your, your spinal column, so we think that our, here I'm going to, I use this all the time, which is... I also send a lot of people to chiropractors because subluxation, having your vertebrae, so your vertebrae is supposed to be stacked up like these books, okay? And if it's a subluxated, if it's like that, or if it's supposed to be lined up right here, right, but then one's this way, right, you want to physically push it back that way, okay? But the problem with my work, like physical therapy work and chiropractic work, and, is if they say to you, we put it there and it goes, it, we put it there and it goes back all the time. Like you always have to keep fixing it. It keeps falling back out of place. First of all, it's because we're not really understanding what this is. Okay. So when you're younger and you injure your back or you have perfect posture, it's your vertebrae are lined up and there's a curvature in there too. It's not just stick straight, but it's lined up and it goes right back in place. And we say it's youth, it's the muscles that are doing it. But what it really is, is they're magnets, okay? They're magnets. And so I can try and put these books back in place, but this, they go back in place. So if I take this thing and tip it that way, or I go like this, or I go like this, it automatically goes back in place. It goes, it knows right where you're supposed to go, okay? So... Now, is your vertebrae this? Okay, well, each vertebrae or each is if you, and I've done a lot of cadaver research, I've cut human bodies up and animal bodies. And so I've seen these things firsthand and they're very hard discs, like you would think of like concrete blocks. They're actually ceramic discs. Our bones are all of these different minerals. We know they're calcium, but they're not unlike what you would call a, a ceramic like um, ceramic would be like your ceramic plates, okay? Well, ceramic can become magnetized. Ceramic, so uh, what's called a neodymium ceramic, some of the most powerful magnets are literally a hybrid of a metallized ceramic. And that's our, our bones too. So we have dissolved metals and we're highly conductive. Now, so you got these vertebrae, these hard disks, right? Or not disks, we got disks in between them, but these hard blocks of bone. But running up and down the middle of it is your spinal cord. And you could actually measure, just like you, if you had a, an extension cord, and could you see the electrons? Because there's electricity. Could you see that? Could you see the electrons in your spinal cord? Yes, you can. And so it's this electromagnetic field, what they would characterize, looks like the Kundalini energy or the caudaceous staff, which is, you can see the energy go like this, okay? Well, that's going through these hollow kind of bones. It's a field that's going 
very close to, to right in the middle of ceramic things, okay? Just in physics, that can and does create whoa, a magnetic field, okay? And our vertebrae, when we are truly healthy and strong and young, we don't, they're not held in place because the muscles are strong. They're held in place because they are a magnetic field that has equal attracting as well as distracting. So when you put a North Pole and a North Pole, so you feel it, it pushes against each other. So if I could make this where this one's levitating, but see if I, I it always wants like a cat, it wants to flip back on its feet. But if I taped it in place, this thing like a, a like you would call like a monorail, <laughs> like in Walt Disney, it would ooh, levitate. Well, that's what your spinal column is doing when it's healthy. It's just, it's in the physical realm, it's literally magnetic fields within other magnetic fields and each one of them. So what aligns your bones up in place is not just the muscles and the, the things that hold it in place. See, when it goes back out of place, it's because what's invisible is each, each disc or each vertebrae, if you could see like a magnet, you could see this as a magnet. This is a magnet, okay? And you could, you could see what the magnetic field looks like. It looks like what's called a toroidal field. It looks like a donut, hollow donut with like a vortex going down the middle. So the reason that we subluxate or have a bone go out of place or have all of these anomalies is because the body is just like sand in the hourglass. The physical part is falling into the gravity well, falling into, and so if the, it's supposed to be, uh, how, how do I best show it? Okay, so let's say, just look at this edge. Okay, this is hard to do this at this, but let's say you could take them like pieces of paper, right? And let's just do these two because they're two exact same size, okay? That's lined up. That's lined up, okay? A subluxation is like this, okay? How do I get it to go back in place? How do I get it to go right back in place, okay? Well, the reason it's going that place is because it's just following where the well is, where the invisible energetic field that's off. So where the body is, is where it's being led to, where it's falling into place, okay? So you can keep pushing it back, but it, if this is where it's falling into, then it will always go there. That's its home. Like, you know, what was it? Uh, that, uh, oh, that golf, uh, um, uh, that's your home. Go back into your home, say, into Happy Madison or something like that. I don't remember. Stupid movie. But it's funny because it's like it falls into its home. So if the home is in the wrong place, because physically that's not as good, that, that hurts and, that's, and the energy doesn't work correct, it binds up here. It gets pinched. So really, functionally, you would be better off being the way that you were designed, the way that it was supposed to be, lined up. So how do I get it back there? If I push it and it won't go back and it won't stay, you put the energy field back in the right place. And then, like a magnet, wherever you put it, bang, it goes right back in place. Doink, doink. And if you could then, like newer magnets are printed with part both North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole. And so they're levitating magnets. They actually levitate in space. I, I, for this last Christmas, I wanted to buy, it was at Best Buy, it's, a, it's a, a speaker, but it's a Death Star, but it floats in space. It's a speaker, it's a Bluetooth speaker, but it's the Death Star. Well, again, it's a magnet with an other magnets, and so it's attracted, but yet it, it creates the space in between. So if we could alter the energy, and that's what the mud packs do, that's what I do, which is we can test for it, and then we use these natural earth magnetic, dielectric, di diamagnetic, paramagnetic, basically just earth materials, and most of it comes from the sea. Most uh, sea-derived stuff are very highly, and again, I'm going to use another term, what's called piezoelectric, and piezoelectric means if you squeeze it, or put pre or blow on it or heat it up or whatever if you add energy to some materials what they do is they blah, 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 and they squirt out they produce electricity okay steel girders will do that uh, concrete blocks will do that just out in nature which is if it's heavy enough it will start to make a electrical field okay or magnetic field so how do i truly fix valgus is first 
or short out, if you're shorted out at your low back or anywhere in your spine, you could be shorted out right here. C1 is one, if your head's all forward and you got hit in the head and that creates scar tissue, now it's stuck there. So by putting this right back in place, you can affect everything else that happens down the lower body. So hopefully that answered that one about valgus. Now I got another question that came to me and that was about, um, I'm not seeing comments. So I don't know if I'm not seeing, or I'm gonna hit live chat. It says I should be seeing them. So if I'm not seeing them, then they're not coming through. So I'm just gonna pretend that they are. <laughs> so the other one that I had is the psoas, which is the psoas and its relationship to emotional release. And I did a YouTube search and there's a ton of videos on this whole thing about emotional release. Let me bring you back to the work of uh, Dr. Wilhelm Reich. And Dr. Wilhelm Reich created what's called orgone generators and the orgone therapy and Reichian therapy. Um, and most of it started because he was, he started working on people and he did massage therapy as well as psychology. And he was like a psychiatrist. He was the protege of Jung, Jung and Freud, I believe. Um, but what he did is when he started working with people's emotions, so you can work with people counseling and they're laying on the couch and you can do dream therapy and everything like that. But they're there and you're here. Another the twain will meet you and you don't, you're not touching, right? Part of it is, is that whole medical system says, well, you know, we really shouldn't touch. We're invading space and blah, blah, blah. But then you would also have like say massage therapists or cranial sacral people that will work on people and people have emotional releases in these things or they suddenly start, I had it happen to me one time and a, a lady was getting a, a, a good massage and a good relaxing massage and suddenly she just, just burst out crying. And it was after I reached, I think, a part in her back where actually it might have been a part in her belly, right in her stomach. This probably was a psoas release. And she suddenly just started crying. And, and what's going on? Did I hurt you or anything? And no, I'm, my, my husband died from cancer. And that was years ago. And I stuffed these things away. And all of a sudden, these memories came back and emotions. And, and I, she was just overwhelmed. But when it came afterwards, because she said, like, I've not cried about these things because I was afraid to cry about them. I was afraid it was overwhelm me, and I couldn't, like, I, like get out lost to see, and I wouldn't be. I feel so much better. And it was by working on the psoas, and that's what Wilhelm Reich found. And, in fact, he called orgone energy because he felt that people, when they were having these releases, it was almost like a, a shuddering of the body and like he would call, an, like look like an orgasm, like an orgasm of the body of just going, ugh. And a lot of times when people actually do have an orgasm, that's where it comes from, is the, the pelvis, you know, your pelvis kind of bucks forward, right? And whether you're male or female, so the male is going to be, sorry, this is <laughs> a little... This is <laughs> this is real, man. I'm, I talk real, and I I'm, uh, and I kind of take the taboo away from stuff because let's be real. This is our bodies, and this is how, what we don't understand. And when it's become taboo and hidden, and you don't understand, and you don't know your body, and you don't, then it becomes a cult, which is it's a secret. And then it's a secret from you, and secrets that you hold from yourself, and secrets that you you don't that your body is holding from you. Because see, that's the thing is with that lady. What that physically means and what Wilhelm Reich found is that you store memories in muscles, in tissues. It's literally taking something. Where's a thought? You can't really see a thought. It's invisible. But our body, because it uses, it's, there's hormonal triggers. When we smell a certain smell or we have a certain hormonal release, whatever happened that was really strong in that time becomes sealed in the deal, baked in the juices. And many times that's why cinnamon... When people smell it, it's like, ah, oh, grandma, abuelito. You know, they see grandma. They, they put cooking at the stove, patting her on the back, or the ancestors come forward because the ancestors are inside of us. They are these hormones and memories. And again, they literally are things that are stored in the body, memories that are stored in the body. Um, this was a story I just told yesterday, which is, okay, what is the brain? What is the neurology of uh, music? We have all of these different things, uh, maps of where, there's certain places, locations that we would say, like the vault, where are these things stored? As hard as, as we, and precise as we say it is, it's not. And that's evidence in this one story that I heard. There was a famous, uh, she's a violinist, professional violinist, virtuoso. She plays in, I forget which, which um, orchestra. 
but she also has seizures and she was having super debilitating seizures and the medication stopped working. And we're talking grand mal seizures, like lying on the floor, biting your tongue, um, blood all over the place, crap in your pants, um, you know, really, really bad stuff. And they told her, they said, we can make it stop, but we would have to do brain surgery. And unfortunately, that part that we would have to remove is the part that all of your music storage. So she held it off and held it off. And finally, it just became, you know, she, she's like, this is no way to live. Fine, go ahead and do it. They cut it out and all of the seizures were gone, but the music was gone. She no longer could be a professional, but it started to slowly come back. And then when it came back, it came back with the vengeance and a fury. And then all of a sudden she got it all back. She didn't have to learn a bunch of stuff. So what that means is it was stored as a copy in a different place. It was physically stored in a place where she was tying her shoes or where it was, you know. So the body stores memory and emotions and time. It stores time. Because the thing is, is the whole thing about a memory of like a smell and stuff like that, you're trans quantumly transported to that time. You save a place in your body. That's why you can have an 80 year old man who, or nine-year-old man who's dying in the old, you know, old folks home, <laughs> the lady leans over him in her dress kind of, and he goes, <laughs> like, his, his, there's no possible way he could do anything about it. But that, to him, he's still 15. He's still 17, 18, 24, six, you know, two, however far you can remember back, because your true self is ageless and you don't have. So going back to the psoas uh, thing, Yes, we store memory. So, and the thing is, is that this action is the pelvis. So it, like the thrusting forward of a male is coming from that, is relating to that as well. Whereas the woman has got to be involved because see, the so has attached to see it. Most people don't know this. Where am I? Let me see my finger. There, there it is. See that one right there? Let me find the color coded one. Um, so it attaches to the inside of the ball and socket joint. It attaches deep in your back. Your guts are in front of it. It fits inside the bowl of your pelvis, but it attaches. Hold on. Uh, so this is the ball and Imagine you're the ball and socket joint of your hip, but the ball and socket also is a ball. It goes on the inside here, right deep inside here. That's the psoas. So when a person's opening their leg, doing the adduction and abduction, psoas is involved, as well as psoas is involved in the pelvic tilt and, and all this other stuff, keeping up straight. The psoas is also uh, packed in, your, your kidneys are packed in and stuff like that. And we know that like when your kidneys are jammed up, the Chinese say that the, that the stagnant kidneys is the um, fearful man, okay? The fearful, so it's anxiety that is fearful. Now, sometimes if you're fear, fearful, things can bite. So sometimes the attack comes out of fear. Sometimes the hiding comes out of fear. This whole thing, which is so as is involved of curling you forward, if it's over tight, it'll curl you forward. Um, the other thing too is just that if the so as, you can also have the flat back, the squinched in butt cheeks, which is kind of closing up your butt. Not only, so in the female, it's also kind of closing up the reproductive organs, organs like, you know, like everything's closed here, like um, no feeling. Um, the man, it's closing up the, that digestive tract and so don't poop as well. Again, we don't get the bad emotions out. So all of this is related to this physiological functioning of the body, posture, but keep in mind, posture what precedes posture? Attitude. So as an actor is, is you want to be like up and bright, you go like this, pull the shoulders back. You want to be hunched over. You want to be pensive. You know, you can see my shoulders do this, but my shoulders roll down forward. If you could see what my back does, my back does all of these different things. And these different structures are related to an emotion, which is an energy first, okay? So if we have emotions that are locked up inside of our body, if we can even just, rather than just trying to talk about it, because sometimes these things are so deeply buried, how are you ever going to find it? If I blocked it out of my memory, how am I ever going to find it? Don't worry. <laughs> Your body stored a memory of it. There's a basement. There's a deep, dark basement, and you've got everything there. And if we want to move forward, 
in terms of not be a scary hoarder, then thank God our body stored some of these things. But the goal is to be strong and to be healthy and to be happy so that you can deal with it, so that you can um, have the energy to have it not take you down. So doing this, the so as release, uh, uh, there's a whole part of you that you can release your chakras and blah, but if you don't get that going, if you don't get that, and if you don't start tipping the bowl and seeing what comes out of it um, and sorting through it, um, you're not going to have that full emotional release on all levels, and you're not going to also be as honest and clear and everything. So anytime people are doing any kind of psychological or, or emotional work, bring it back to the body. And the place that you're going to see that's where your deepest, darkest, as well as your most tender bits, your loins, that is the psoas. And the psoas is, as I said before, it's the only, so esoterically too, it's the only muscle in the body, the only thing structurally that links the upper body with the lower body. It's the thing that crosses, it is your, your bridge, it is that rainbow bridge. It is that crossroads that, or the, you know, that thing that crosses over and unites the, uh, the top from the bottom. And we're like an upside, or like a triangle, upside down triangle this way, and a right side up triangle this way. And where they come together, that is exactly what. Hey, hey Angie, hi, hi Jason. Good, that's great. You're the first person that I did see live comments, and so thank you for doing that, Angie. It uh, is awesome to see you. Um, uh, these things are connected. Um, and even our body, that star pattern that we kind of show is, is we're not unlike a starfish. You're not unlike inside of, a, of an apple. That's what Leonardo da Vinci was showing here is that, you know, this Vitruvian, I think that's, yeah, not, that Vitruvian man, okay? So imagine the head is the top of the star. You got points here and then two points here. So when they show the star is a man, and the star is a starfish, and, and all of these things, it's based upon the geometry of the atomic structure, and in particular, the hydrogen molecule, of which that's the primary thing of which we're built upon our own DNA spiral. So, but what that means is, is that we do have this architecture of we're supposed to be balanced. And then, like I said, this is the other thing is where you see that is be like this, that's in an hourglass, okay? And an hourglass is the sand is going and at the point, it comes to a squeeze point or the black hole, it comes to the singularity and then spits out at the other side, right? So where it's coming from one place, it's going into another place. And then the, don't worry, the world is always gonna turn you upside down. So, you know, with an hourglass, once time is done, flip it over and it looks exactly the same, which is above and below. So. This is a perfect place too, which is, this is our timekeeper. We've got the timekeeper in our head, but we've got the timekeeper in our guts, in our soul, in our, our, your will, which is right at this point, right at that, that Merkin point. And so, so as is the one that bridges those two places and it's too tight, which then keeps it clamped down and, or it's too weak or it's lopsided. And, uh, and then it also, it stores a lot of memories that we don't want to touch, that we put in there. And a lot of these memories, too, are real. So Freud went to a lot of this. You know, he was very, he said it was all, you know, childhood type of trauma that was related to the, the, the anal phase. And which is, that's just, you know, di uh, diapering as well as, as um, learning to go to the bathroom yourself, which is one of his things, which is, this is so important because it's linked into your hormones, but it's also linked into your power. So one of the very first things as a child is you'll get children, especially boys are this, which is they're very stubborn about going poop in the potty. Potty training boys is much more difficult than girls usually. And part of that is, is because there's a psychological thing, which is I know it's dirty. I know I'm sitting in a dirty diaper and it's giving me a rash, but it's mine. 
I get to keep it and you can't make me. And I, you have to sit on the toilet, you've got to release. And the soaz has to tip. So the thing is, is the soaz got involved in all of these signals from our very first moments out of the gate. Is This was the first thing that was receiving the signals. The little baby laying there, getting its diaper changed, lift up its legs and you know wipe its butt and all this other stuff. And, you know, we have animals and oftentimes to get the goats or to get the, the, the um, sheep uh, nursing, She'll, as they're nursing, she'll turn around and she'll clean their butt. She'll look there because like with animals, you have to kind of get that pipe going. Little babies are the same. So it's the suckling reflex um, that actually gets uh, this whole pipe kind of going. So that's the thing. Sasoa stirs up a lot of really uh, very deep and old stuff, but it's you. And it's such important stuff to, to deal with and, and uh um, so go there and uh, start learning it and start releasing it um, and getting stronger. And you'll have stronger legs. You'll have stronger stance um, all because of this. Uh, let's go to the next topic, which is um, I'm going to do a little bit. Um, so I've been receiving a lot on my root canal one, which is there's a lot of controversy on this root canal thing, which is, is there ever a good root canal? And I actually have two of these guys, these comments that are, I didn't post because they're like, you know, you're horrible. Like, like this is, and part of it's, it's true. It's part of it's true, which is some people should never have root canals because it's too far along and it turns into a infection. Now I have multiple root canals, but I'm here to tell you that there are times when a root canal will go bad. And I got a tooth missing right here. That was a root canal. And it was a root canal that I really, Hindsight 2020, I should have never had that one turn into a root canal. There was not much tooth left. It was a post that they had to put into it. It was very risky. So, but here's the real risk of it though, is that a bad root canal, and some argue even good root canals, it hides infection. It hides buried infection. And this one, when they pulled it out, it goes, oh, you know, there was some infection there. So he put me on an antibiotics, uh, um, forget the, the one that I went on, um, a clindamycin. Um, and because there was just a little bit of infection, but let me show you if, if light, let me see if I can get the light on better. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah, I don't know if that's really good here. This is, I'll put a light under my eye and you can maybe see it. Yeah. Okay. So if you look carefully, we'll look at the two eyes. Okay. So if you look carefully, and I'll, I'll use do this on another video. Okay, so you can see the wrinkles that I have underneath my eyes. There's there's this, but then on this side, it's not, it's kind of hard to see it. I had, wish I had a better, but take my word for it. When you look closely at my eyes, this eye has a bigger wrinkle in it. There's a big crease right there. And if you look at my ear, I've got more creases here. So I'm going to get up close. More creases here than I do on this side. So what does that mean? I got bone loss on this side and it was because of this tooth. This root canal, because of the infection here, locally what it does is it uses the body to fix or to support the immune system. So I've been having more cave-ins on this side and I actually started having some problems with this eye. This eye was not seen as good and I don't notice that I have any problem with, but I had cave-ins in this, which is my eye is, eyeball is sinking into my skull more, and it's related to this tooth. Now, I got the tooth out, so the infection is gone. We treated the infection. That's one of the other things that changed my gut, which is when I did this, this clindamycin, it totally changed my whole gut ecology. Um, a lot of times antibiotics kills a whole bunch of stuff, but I rebuilt it up afterwards with a whole bunch of other good probiotics and I, I digest much better now than I did before. Part of my bad digestion even is because of bad tooth, because you're sucking these, these poison juices into your body and it's your whole immune system. So is this going to be like this forever? No, it's not going to be like it because once you stop the infection, then the degradation, the, the erosion stops. And then if you build your minerals back up, and especially with the, the fermented greens and the greens that I eat, and I'm not taking a calcium or anything like that, you're, once you stop the infection, the body will rebuild it up. And then also stem cells 
which is the, the velvet deer antler. There's a lot of stem cells in, in fruits and vegetables and things like that. And I'm happier and I'm stronger and you can rebuild anything. You're printing your body. Um, and you know, you can get new ink and reprint anything. <laughs> so, um, I'm not so worried about this, but this is what a bad root canal can do. So imagine people that's got a whole bunch of root canals throughout that are bad that the dentist says they're fine and it doesn't hurt them. And so they don't think, well, that's the old wrinkled people possibly, right? So here's the other thing. It says, can a root canal ever be good? Well, yes, there are times. And I'm going to argue this with people who say it never, never can because it can't kill all the infection in the microtubules. There are people that have what's called root reabsorption, which is any dentist will tell you or put it, put it this way, okay? Anyone will tell you that they knew somebody that got shot with a bullet and, it, and the bullet got lodged in a bone and the bone got infected, but then, then it healed over and it became calcified and now it's strong and it's healthy and it just basically sealed it off, killed the infection. And so there are times that actually even people can have a dead root that dies, but it doesn't then putrefy and then turn into, if your immune system is strong enough, you can have a tooth that dies, you get punched and it kills the root, but then the body then goes in and it fills that root structure, cleans out the dead body of the, and fills it up with calcium. So essentially, it's a, you make your own root canal. Healthy people can make their own root canal, which is basically, we took the infection out, we replaced it with good disinfected uh, a healthy bone, and now it's all a good strong bone. Now you got your still strong same teeth, um, but it's not infected doesn't have any infection in it. Uh, that can happen. And so if you have a person that has a good, healthy root canal, the body can do this. Even if it is a gutta percha, you say there's toxins in it. Our body is amazing. If you're strong enough, the body can basically seal it up and then take all and exchange all the infection out of there and then sanitize it and then make it so it's, it's perfect, okay? Got another question. What about cavities? Do we have a medicine to stop the cavity? Well, yes, we do. The medicine to stop the cavity is, is, is one, hydrochloric acid. Having enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach means you die just so. That starts with you being a kid that's got enough salt. And parents that feed their kids sea salt, um, that's the number one minerals because we build HCL in the stomach to digest your food. HCL also kills infection. Um, the very first dentistry, uh, rather than using bleach to when they drill the tooth and they and you had a cavity to kill the cavity or to kill the the uh, caries uh, um, infection because that's what cavities are is caries it's a, a a infection okay they use they would squirt hydrochloric acid in there now when you are really um, uh, okay when you're a really healthy person and you have enough hydrochloric acid, let's say you break a bone or you have an injury inside your body, your body will take excess hydrochloric acid through the bloodstream and like bleach, like an anti-inflective, it will clean out the wound and then allow for more bone growth to grow back or healthy tissue to grow back, right? And it actually stimulates healthy tissue. So number one is having good digestion, making sure your kids have uh, um, sea salt, enough sea salt to per, especially if they're sweating out there in the gym and stuff like that. Make sure they have like, you know, at least every couple of days, a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon and some water and have them drink it down. Um, that will stop the infection. Now, the other thing is, is it's the microbiome, which is, we know gut infection. So people, if we've had a lot of gut infections and things like that, that we've had to have antibiotics, you rebuild it up with probiotics. And there's a whole host of different types of probiotics. There's a specific probiotic that we make here too, which is called Dentaven. And Dentaven is what's called B, uh, BLIS or BL, yeah, BLISM118. It's a particular strain of a strep, a strep, uh, it's a, a healthy strep. But what it does is it inoculates, it's supposed to live in the salivary glands and the parotid gland. And so just like our guts can be messed up, these things are a probiotic. So when you, you get like salivate because you're getting ready to eat something, your body produces these probiotics that it mixes into the food here before it even gets to your stomach. 
So, uh, but when that's healthy, when your gut eco- or your your mouth ecology is healthy, it doesn't allow for these these um, caries or any type of um, bacteria or other um, things that grow that makes the plaque um, that grows in the plaque that then erodes. Now, the other thing too is 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 it the eating away of the enamel? Is that irreversible? No, because the thing is, is the reason that we get a I did this before too. Uh, go, go on the other one, um, one of my videos. But um, if you have the bone here, okay, and a cavity is like this, it forms like a hole. It's supposed to be straight, but it forms like a hole because it ate into it, okay? Now it's glob, 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 and it's eating that. Now that's a cavity of which we have to then drill a, 